It was late on a Thursday evening. Bork and Beans was relaxing on the plush couch while Sergeant Sausage prowled about, as was her habit. It had been a long week, and they'd successfully wrapped up the last case and were now enjoying a quiet evening at home. Why don't you sit down and relax, chided Pork and Beans. Sergeant Sausage glanced over at her companion, but said nothing. Have a glass of wine, unwind. Savor the evening, Pork and Beans purred. Sergeant Sausage sighed and was about to reach for her glass of wine when the doorbell rang. The two cats looked at each other, eyebrows raised. Well, who could that be? wondered Pork and Beans. Sergeant Sausage jumped to the floor and moved quickly to the door. The doorbell rang again, just as she opened it. Greeting her was a very large mastiff who towered over her. While his size was a bit daunting, the dog had an air of grandeur and dignity about him. May I help you? Sergeant Sausage asked after catching her breath. Uh, are you one of those cat detectives? the dog asked. Why, yes, I'm Sergeant Sausage. How may I be of service? The large mastiff suddenly sighed, and his eyes were watering. My master gave me a beautiful collar to wear, and I lost it, his voice trembled. He's coming back from a trip in two days, and I have to find that collar. I've looked everywhere for it, but I can't find it. Can you help me? Sergeant Sausage gave a sympathetic sigh and invited the massive dog into the house. She led him into the living room, where Pork and Beans was, sprawled across the couch like a wealthy duchess. In short order, the two detectives learned that the dog's name was Randy, and he had no idea how he could have lost his glass-studded collar. As he told him his tale of wool, Pork and Beans doubted it could have slipped off because the dog's head was massive. Sergeant Sausage patted Randy's paw, offering an occasional nod of reassurance. It took Randy no more than ten minutes to relate his story, and when he was done, Pork and Beans announced that they'd be happy to accept his case. Reassuring him once again, the two cats told him they would be at his house first thing in the morning. And don't you spend another minute worrying about this, Pork and Beans pronounced. Everything is under control and in our very capable hands. She then shooed him out the door and returned to the couch. Sergeant Sausage noticed that she was quietly purring with satisfaction. Well, the next morning, the two cats arrived at Randy's expanse of home. This yard goes on forever, exclaimed Sergeant Sausage. If he lost his collar in there, it'll be like finding a needle in a haystack. Pork and Beans smiled serenely. Oh, I know that look, Sergeant Sausage said. You know where that collar is, don't you? Well, just then, Randy the Mastiff came lumbering across the yard. I don't think I slept a wink last night, he said with great relief, his tail wagging with confidence. Pork and Beans chided the huge dog for not having faith in the two detectives. She then asked him to give them a tour of his yard and his favorite places in it. Randy's ears perked up with excitement, and he happily showed them around. In short time, the three gathered again underneath a large shade tree. Randy looked glum. Well, I guess I'm done for, he said sadly. My owner comes home tomorrow, and I don't have my collar. Sergeant Sausage patted him on his front paw, trying to reassure him. Pork and Beans shook her head. Our dear Randy, you have nothing to worry about. Your collar is right over there, hanging from the edge of that hedge. Well, Randy looked to where Pork and Beans pointed, and sure enough, there was his collar, its glass studs reflecting in the morning light. There it is, there it is, he said gleefully. I can't believe you found it, and off he went to retrieve his collar. Now, the two cats smiled and headed home, and after a short while, Sergeant Sausage turned to her fellow detective and asked, How did you know where to find that collar? It was very elemental, my dear friend. I mulled over everything he told us last night. He said his collar had a clasp that opened to allow it to slip over that massive head of his. Well, he also said he was playing in the sprinklers in the late afternoon. You and I both know that dogs love to violently shake water off their bodies. Well, that clasp must have come loose and simply flown off his neck. Because it was late afternoon, the sun was in the west and those glass studs 
wouldn't have caught the light. Sarge and Sausage smiled warmly at her friend. Ah, another case solved, she pronounced. Pork and Beans merely said she was hungry, so the two cat detectives pranced home for a richly deserved breakfast.